All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Joe Ardiser, who is in Idaho. How are you doing, Joe? I'm doing well, John. Yeah, and, and Joe's a former digital agency owner of 12 years, and then he started Smart uh, Pricing Table, which is interactive proposal software, a SaaS-based business. And what we're going to talk about today is proposal writing. I mean, it's a subject that probably doesn't get enough attention. Uh, and we see all sorts of different approaches to propose to proposal writing. And obviously, there's there's uh, there's templates and all this out there, but there. But let's start at the very beginning, Joe, here, right? You know, writing a proposal is as strategic uh, a, an activity uh, as, as other parts of the sales process are, but it doesn't really get the attention it deserves. Why is that? Yeah, well, I think, I think one part is proposal writing is, is hard. Um, it requires you to really think through things. And I think a lot of people... <clears throat> A lot of people like to, they like the flashy, you know, talking to the customer. Um, but when it comes to actually, you know, putting down terms and thinking through the structure, uh, it's not quite as fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it, it's it's not. And and let's face it, it's not fun for the person doing it, and and it's not that much fun often for the person on the receiving end of it either, because a lot of them aren't aren't very uh, end user friendly, shall we say? Sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> So how would you how would you how would you advise people or, or or what is if you take a step back for a moment what is a better approach to proposal writing how should you even look at it to begin with Yeah well I remember you know as as you mentioned I owned and operated a, an agency for about 12 years and I remember in the very beginning creating proposals in Word doc and I hated it um, mm -hmm. I I loved doing the work you know we were uh, technically proficient, we're good designers and developers, um, but creating the actual proposal felt like drudgery. Um, and so I think I think one thing that really helps is, you know, there there's a there's two um, kind of streams of thought. You're either executing um, or you're building a system. And I think a lot of times um, agencies or businesses really struggle with the executing because they haven't taken the time to build a system. What do we sell? Um, what what are some of the limitations, um, or I like to call fences around the things that we sell? Mm -hmm. What are some potential upsell opportunities? When you figure those things out, and you're you're not you know having to think critically on the fly when you're creating your proposal, I think it's a lot more fun. Yeah, ab absolutely. And then uh, in terms of like how comprehensive it should be because i've seen different people take different approaches some people go for quite a minimalist approach some people go for quite the opposite it's quite laden with i mean it's almost sometimes it's almost like receiving a book from people because right. they pile right. in everything they can get so sure. what what is what do you think is the best practice or is there yeah, well, I, I think you could get a lot of different answers on that. I remember I once had a friend owned an agency and he was uh, selling a, a website to a bank and it was literally two paragraphs. Paragraph one, like 50 grand. Uh, paragraph mm -hmm. two with some additions, an additional $20,000. For me, that makes me have a panic attack. Right. <laughs> um, because, uh, and I, I, li I like to be somewhere in the middle. I want to provide enough definition to where my terms are clear and not so much that I'm overwhelming my customer. Um, and so uh, I, I think, you know, you, you need you need at least enough so that you have some handles to grab onto. Right. If I say that I'm going to make you a website, that could be a thousand dollars. It could be a million dollars or business yeah. cards. Does it include printing costs? You know, there, there's a baseline bare minimum um, outlining that you should do. Um, and and I, I tend to think, you know, you know, the niche um, with my product is uh, is the pricing table. That's where we really excel. Right. Um, and I think another really important thing is if you can put your terms with your line items. Right. So an example mm -hmm. of this, you know, if you're selling someone business cards, um, all of your your terms as far as printing and revisions and all that kind of stuff 
should be right inside of that um, line item uh, for right. birds. When they get separated, that's where, you know, how many of us have signed a contract and we're just scrolling through and you just click sign, right? Um, mm -hmm. But when you're looking at prices, you're paying attention. And you've got little bite-sized terms inside of each of those line items. I think that's really powerful. Yeah, that's a good. That's a that's a great piece of advice because, like as you say, um, oftentimes, you know, it's, particularly if it's if it's quite long, you know, we're going through, we're looking at the pricing, but we're kind of ignoring a lot of the other information because we don't think it's quite as important, and it actually may end up coming back to to bite us. So, what are, what are some of the essential elements for to have in a proposal and then what are some elements that perhaps you know you would advise people to put in that perhaps they generally don't yeah i think um i just kind of thinking through how we did proposals at my former mm -hmm. agency um, i think it's really important to have you know and of course it depends on the industry but some kind of clear cover page or cover letter uh, to make it feel personalized. You're not just throwing out, you know, this, you know, very generic proposal. Um, I would also say, um, you know, I, I think a lot about social proof. So uh, it, it means somewhat, uh, somewhat of importance, what I say about myself, but what's more important is what others say about me. So in, in a proposal, I would definitely want to include testimonials, um, review sites um, for my product or service. Um, uh, terms are really important. Um, you know, I, I, I remember telling my team, if you look through our agreement terms, every single line, every single clause has a story, right? We added that because we ate concrete with this particular thing. Or we added this because uh, it, we had some real tension with a with a customer, and as you as you um, outline your terms better and better, your project goes smoother, and the clients that maybe don't want to work with you because those terms kind of self select themselves out. Um, another essential I would say is um, I, I always like to include you know what's not included in my proposal. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Uh, it doesn't have to be extensive, but some some baseline stuff. So like I, I owned a web design agency. We would say things like if there's some very custom functionality, like some crazy calculator or weird thing mm -hmm. like that, uh, that's not included in this bid because we haven't discovered it. Right. Um, and I say that the last thing I'd say as far as essentials go, um, I would I would say um, a clear and I'm a, I'm a bit biased here because I I'm a believer in this so much that I created my own SaaS product, um, mm -hmm. but a really clear pricing table. Um, uh, you know, I think I think cl uh, being clear about what you're providing, uh, being clear about what's optional, um, what are some additional things, um, and having you know again, industries are different, but I like a degree of interactivity um, because it allows my customer to be involved in the process. Um, when you're just sending a static PDF, mm -hmm. uh, that can be hard. I, I remember I talked to a, a customer of ours that said, hey, I wish we had your software two weeks ago. We just lost a city contract um, because of $300. Oh, wow. They, they sent a static bid and the, the prospect didn't realize they could change it. So those are some of the big ones. Mm -hmm. If I had a little bit more time, I'd nerd out sure. some of the yeah, yeah, yeah. But but the but but the good points there and the thing around um, pricing as well and obviously you know that's your area of expertise is is making that very very clear and transparent because it you know you, you can really derail a sales process if you end up at the proposal stage and then you get caught up in you know misunderstandings around pricing or, or like you said misunderstandings about what's included what's not included those types of things so uh but the attention to the pricing because as you said i mean when we get a proposal let's face it as human beings what do we do we go immediately to pricing we may go back and review the other stuff later but we're go always going to go to the pricing first yeah. so yeah. having that really clear is obviously really really critical yeah i i agree and um, I tended to be in the, the line of thought, like I would, um, uh, instead of having three or four line items for an entire project, I might have more like 10 to 15 because mm -hmm. I, like, I like to have, you know, break this big project into smaller pieces 
and then have a price association with some of some of, with each of those line items. Now, other people would disagree with that approach, and that, that's why there's a lot of different proposal software out there. But what I like about that is it builds trust, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, I'm not I'm not giving something vague with a big price tag, but I'm actually breaking it down, and then I'm going into detail into each individual line item um, so that they can see it. And um, what one of the um, uh, cool features that I've really made a, an important um, item on our software is having the price always at hand. And so as you scroll mm -hmm. through a scope of work on one of my proposals or using my software, um, you have a, a price that dynamically updates on the top right um, so that they can always see where they're at. Um, <clears throat> and interactivity, yes. John, I have a fun story about interactivity. Yeah, yeah, please. I remember I we once had a prospect that that reached out to me and said, "Hey, we've got twenty five thousand dollars for a new website." Um, that's a decent amount of money, but we were at a point in our business where that was actually our lower end. Mm -hmm. um, we did high end WordPress sites that often land, lasted three to six months. Right. But we needed the work, and so I I grabbed my sales guy. I said, "Hey, let's put together a proposal, real bare, bare bones." They wouldn't even meet with us. They said, hey, 25K and surprise, we won't meet with you. Mm -hmm. um, I said, put together a proposal, deselect a bunch of stuff, uh, leave all the options on there and just throw it over the fence. Generally, I don't re recommend and I hated myself throwing a proposal over the fence. If I'm going to make a proposal, at least yeah. I want to get 15 minutes with you. Um, well, uh, we didn't hear anything for two weeks. And lo and behold, two weeks later, um, they signed for $34,000. We had, didn't mm. interact with them. They, we just got a signature request. And magically, they found um, $9,000. Um, had I sold that to them, I would have been a pushy sales guy. But because nice. we, gave, we empowered them, they upsold themselves, and it ended up being a fantastic project. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great story. And I think very illustrative because uh, of what you said earlier is the idea of transparency and and I totally agree with that. And I think today, I mean, given where we are today and given inflation and given everything that's going on in the world right. and everything that we've been through, I think the more transparent you are and the more you empower the the, the buyer, the better off you're going to be. Because um, as you said, I mean, if you just get a proposal and it's got a, a lump sum in it or whatever, or maybe a couple of line items, you naturally, you're natural. Let's face it, as human beings, we're such skeptics. Um, our, your natural reaction is going to be, hmm, I wonder how inflated that is. Sure, sure. Yeah, if you can spell that out and you know break things down, I think it just makes it more digestible and easy to understand. Because not only are you providing you know, these individual line items with individual prices, but together, it's a lot. Individually, mm -hmm. um, it's small. And so one of the features kind of lining up with that that we have is line items can open and close. So you can see all of your line items at once and get a high level view, but then you can also get into the details, get into the weeds. Mm. And then just talk to me a little bit more about uh, interactivity within proposals, because obviously, I mean, nowadays you can do all of that. Uh, you can right. build in a lot of in interactivity um, because that's why nobody's printing and delivering proposals anymore. They're all ele right. they're electronic. Um, what are some of the uh, innovative or, or interesting things you've seen or you've done with proposals from an interactivity point of view? Yeah, well, I can, I can, I've, I know a lot of the products on the market. You know, I think you know, the standard things are, you know, allow, you know, if it's something that could have a quantity, having a quantity editor for your, for your customer, your prospect, I think that's really important. Obviously optional uh, line items um, so that you can, uh, you know, give them choice, empower them. And um, with our tool, I'd, I'd add on to that, um, expand and collapse. Um, another cool that feature that we have actually is, um, if a prospect opens a line item, we also have proposal analytics, and you can actually see that they open that line item. If they click mm -hmm. it, change the quantity, those things as well. Uh, but I think uh, that interactivity has been really helpful for our customers. Um, another one, and as far as I know, this is just unique to our system, but um, we do something called line item upsells. Uh, so how I usually explain this, imagine, I think in terms of websites, I'm an agency, Sure. Let's say I'm selling you a website and there's a blog line item. 
Well, I might describe the blog, put some limitations on the blog, and then give you a price. But inside of that line item, I can also have upsells that are specific to that blog. For instance, um, author bio pages, uh, 500 right. bucks for that, um, uh, related blog posts. Um, and so you've got this big kind of base uh, uh, blog for, say, $2,000, but you have uh, $1,500 of additional upsells. Um, and we found that that interactivity, customers love that because a blog, just like a website, 500 bucks. I mean, there are web, there are blogs on the internet right now that are probably valued at, you know, tens of millions of dollars. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Um, and so that kind of fine tuning is something I think is really important as well. Yeah. And you know, what's interesting about that is like, cause some people would be, um, especially when you said about like being able to edit quantities and all of that. I mean, some people would be really skittish about, oh, well, I don't want to give that power over to them. They're just going to over to the buyer. They're just going to undercut. But as you say, it, it makes it a more uh, collaborative um, experience and maybe take some of the friction out of that out of it. Yeah, I, I agree. And I mean, there's always trade offs, right? Business life, it's full of trade offs. So you are giving up that control, um, you're giving it to your prospect, but you're also getting respect and trust back. Um, I would say, you know, at my former agency, and I, so this software, my software, Smart Pricing Table, I actually developed it about six years ago at my agency um, and for our own use. And it was because it went so well that I decided to take it to, take it to the market. But one of the things that I saw was, you know, 90 um, 95% or so of our prospects love the format. They love the transparency, the interactivity, the empowerment. And the remaining 5% generally self-selected themselves out. They didn't like the format. And mm -hmm. I was okay with that. Because if you want vague, that means my agency is never going to be done with this forever yeah. project. Right? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And obviously, as we said, I mean, some people are just, are, are just uh, a bit leery about being that you know interactive or collaborative, um, which is which is a bit of a shame. Um, in the last few moments uh, that we have, um, tell me a little bit more about how you would, what you would advise people if they haven't thought about if they haven't really thought about their proposals or they haven't revisited them in a while. How should they start? How should they start the process of reevaluating how good their proposals are? Yeah. Well, you know, in, in business, I became a sales guy incidentally. It wasn't something mm -hmm. I really enjoyed or understood before I started my agency, but I had to learn it. Um, and I've since then fell in love with sales. I absolutely love it. Um, but one of the things that I think really holds people back with proposal writing is they don't actually have a system. If you're grabbing documents and you're, um, you know, this project sounds like this project from three months ago. Well, it takes so much time and energy, um, but you're also not really thinking about your business on a whole, the, the, you know, the classic saying, you know, don't just work mm -hmm. in your business, but work on your business. I think, I think when you approach proposal writing um, in, a, in a system kind of way, like, you know, what are the actual line items that we want to sell? Mm -hmm. uh, what are the types of projects that we want to take on? Um, what what are the things that we don't do, right? Um, I you know I, I remember reading Jim Collins talking about uh, it's just as important that your company knows uh, what you don't do as what you do, right? Yeah, yeah. And so proposal writing, I, I've I've told this to my customers, and I, I 100 percent authentic. Um, I hear people say proposal writing; they hate it all the time. Um, I can gen I can genuinely say I love proposal writing because either I was building my system, right? Someone wanted this particular line item and I realized I can make that reusable and sell it in a second in the mm -hmm. future. So I, it was even building my system, which feels great because I'm defining my business. I'm building uh, blocks together. I'm making this the, the future better or I'm executing, right? Now, again, those two different uh, yeah. you know, brain functions. Now I'm executing. And with our system, we were able to get, you know, 95% of our proposals were reused. The content was reused. And so it was really just that 5% of, you know, 
you know, big customization on a particular project where it was a bit more the grind. But even that, if someone said they wanted this widget or, or that, um, I would think, can I sell this in the future? Can I define this line item in a reusable way so that I can add it to another project with a click of a button? So again, build mm -hmm. a system and, and then, then it's just like, then you can just be that lively salesperson um, and you don't get you know, pulled down by the proposal writing. Yeah, listen, there's a, there's a fantastic pieces of advice and, and insight. Uh, all of Joe's information, obviously, is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and Smart Pricing Table. Yeah, well, I, uh, as I mentioned, we actually, the origin, the genesis of the idea was um, about six years ago. Um, a little bit over a year ago, I decided to take it to the market. Um, and it's really based on the... The, just the incredible success that I had at my own agency. Um, so you can go to um, Smart Pricing Table if you're interested. I do uh, complimentary demos, and I'd love to uh, uh, do a free trial with anyone that is interested in improving on their proposal process. Yeah, that's some fantastic. And I would encourage people to go check it out. Uh, who knows how many deals you may have lost or elongated the sales processes because of not paying enough attention to the proposal piece of it. So don't think of it as an afterthought. Think of it as a strategic part of the process and go check out uh, Smart Pricing Table. All right. Well, listen, thanks again, Joe. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you.